So one thing I've noticed about myself is that I have a real desire to lead people to Christ. And I want to share the gospel. Um, and sometimes I'm able to do that in, you know, my everyday situations. And it's really cool that that happened. And I like to pray every day that God would give me an opportunity to share the gospel. But one thing I've noticed is that if I'm not intentional about doing that, um, and if I'm not intentional about getting that into my weekly schedule, a lot of times it just falls through the cracks and it it ends up uh, kind of at the bottom of my, my to-do list because there's not an urgency that I feel um, from any type of deadline that anyone else has put upon me to do that. It's simply between me and God. And so one of the things that, that I've come to realize is I need to get this into my schedule. I want to be sharing the gospel on campus, you know, at least once a week. There was a time in my life where I was able to do it every single day, um, but I'm not really on campus every day anymore. Now, God might be leading some of you guys to do that uh, every day, to, to go out and try and find someone to share the gospel with. But I want to give you a little tool that me and the staff have come up with that we think is going to be maybe the best solution yet uh, to getting evangelism and prayer into our weekly schedule with some form of accountability that's going to help us keep doing that even when our schedules get busy. So that's where the power hour comes in. So what is the power hour, you may be asking. Maybe you've heard that phrase uh, thrown around a little bit if you've been a part of Challenge. Uh, but you might want to know what, it, what exactly is the power hour and how do we use that? Well, I'm going to explain right here. So the power hour is a reoccurring uh, one hour time slot each week uh, where you and a partner will do one of these three things each week. So the first thing is you actually go out on campus and find people to share the gospel with. And that's where our spiritual surveys come in. And you can download those uh, on onto your phone to have on your home screen. And you can go out and do those spiritual surveys. Now, if you're a part of Challenge, that's different than the 30-second surveys. The spiritual surveys are, you know, a, a number of different questions about spiritual things that will help people gain an interest. And it also leads into an opportunity for you to be able to share your testimony or to share your go share the gospel with that person, as well as get their contact information and be able to follow up with them on a different day. So that's the first thing, share the gospel on campus. The second thing you could do during the power hour is pray together on campus for an hour. One, one tool that I love to use is called the hour that changes the world. And you can Google that online and you'll see it's 12 five-minute sections of different types of prayer that you can go through, um, ranging from praise, from thanksgiving, to confession, to listening prayer, to intercession, supplication, all these different types of things that you might not have even known were options of ways to pray. And you can do that with a, a, a partner on campus for an hour. Or third, you can go to a gospel appointment with your partner together. Now, that time might need to be shifted based on the person that you're meeting up with to share the gospel. So if your regular reoccurring weekly meeting was on a Monday at 2 p.m., but the person you want to meet with can only meet on a Wednesday at 3 p.m., you could change your meeting for that week and your power hour could shift from Monday at 2 p.m. to Wednesday at 3 p.m. for that week. And if there's ever a week when your regular meeting time doesn't work, that's okay. Just Change the, change the time, change the day to a time that works for both of you guys that week. And then after that week, you, you can get back to your regular schedule. But it's really important, I think, to have that regular standing meeting time so that you're not needing to spend all the effort re-planning a time to meet each week. So those are the three options. So from week to week, you can change it up. You don't have to go out on campus and share the gospel with someone new every week. So, for example, maybe the first week you do that, you go out, you share the gospel on campus. And during that, that time, you meet someone you want to set up a gospel appointment with to further explain the gospel. And so maybe the next week, you're able to meet up with that person uh, for your power hour and share the gospel. And then maybe for the third week, 
you actually just want to spend some time praying together with your power hour partner. However you want to do it, you can do that. I think some people are, are going to gravitate more towards evangelism. Some people are going to gravitate more towards prayer. I would encourage you guys to try and mix it up, but that's totally okay if you end up having a preference for doing one thing over the other. You can use it however you want. Um, so how, how you use a power hour is up to you and your partner. Um, now, you get to choose your power hour partner. Uh, for most of you guys, having one slot a week is probably going to be suffic sufficient in just having one partner. Now, if you, your schedule is open and you think it's responsible for you to maybe have two, two partners who you're going out with, uh, that sounds weird, but you know what I mean, to go out and share the gospel or something. Um, that's, that's fine as well if you can do that. Um, so it's up to you, though, to take the initiative to find, uh, find a power hour partner. And I want to encourage you guys to do that this week, if possible, even to do that today. The longer you delay it, uh, the less likely that it's going to happen. That's just something that I've found with things that are important. Um, I just need to oftentimes do it right there, right then. So um, it's up to you to take initiative to find a partner this week and to set up a weekly meeting time uh, that works for both you guys. Now, this could be someone who is on the core team or whatever ministry you're a part of. Um, this could be someone who you're just wanting to invest in. Maybe it's a new believer who you're wanting to, to help come alongside them to share the gospel and to learn to prayer. This is a great way for you to get in some mentoring time with that person and to show them uh, some more skills in following Jesus. So, like I said, if you're like me, um, you're likely going to delay finding a partner and setting up a time until a time when it's convenient to do so, which will likely not end up happening, and it'll end up somewhere at the bottom of your to-do list. And um, and uh, let's let's not have that happen. Um, so I want to encourage us right now to take some time today to reach out to someone and see if they would be our power, our partner. Try and set up a time, lock it in. If that person is not able to do it, or if they already have found someone else to be a power hour partner with, then keep looking, keep looking, keep looking. Once again, guys, there's like 35,000 students at San Diego State. So even if you need to go out and share the gospel on your own a couple times before you find someone who would be your power hour partner, uh, give it a shot. And if you're really struggling with, with finding a partner, come talk to the staff. We'll help you. And we love going out and sharing the gospel anyway. So uh, we're going to find some students to be our power, our partners. So even if that needs to happen, let's do that. And that'll be a great experience. So, uh, put in the effort. Um, and I know God will bless our faithfulness in this. And already this semester, we have seen quite a few people indicate decisions to follow Christ. A bunch of people have gotten to hear the gospel. A lot of people have responded po positively as we've gone out and tried to meet new people. So, Keep up the good work, find a power hour partner, and let's do this.